Precalc, chapter one, section four. So we're talking about functions here and uh, how we can shift and uh, transform and stretch them uh, by adding some just basic operations to the equations. Uh, and so we want to first make sure we know the parent function. The parent function is like the base function or the graph. So like if I said uh, x squared, we should automatically know what the shape of that graph is right away. And so down below here are some of the uh, basic functions and, and shapes you should recall. So like if we had this one here, f of x equals 3, uh, we should know what kind of shape that is right away. We should know that's actually a shape of a horizontal line at y equals 3. And so it'd be that equation. And so do you know the apparent function shape? So g of x is x is actually this black line right here that we already have graphed. This is the linear equation. It's like 1x plus 0. You want to put it in slope-intercept form. Uh, so this one here, this is the absolute values. These are the vertical lines for absolute value. Uh, that one, I'm hoping you recall that absolute values have a V shape. So there's the V shape for the absolute value. Because it's like the linear equation we just had, but the uh, bottom portion here it can't be negative, so it's reflected upwards to make it composite again. And we can also sketch the x squared, the quadratic. So g of x would be x squared. We should also see the quadratic here. Um, 2, 4. So I'm using some symmetry to help me plot that. So I'm trying to be fair, fairly accurate if I could sketch it. So there's the quadratic, a cubic function, x cubed, you should know what the shape of that is. And when I plot these, I know these points right away by the shape. And so I haven't mentioned it yet. The number in front of here is the a, which is the awesome a value I call. So that, that value is special because if I go one right, I always go up that a value. And then I know the shape, I know I'm going to go... Uh, left one down one for the shape it has that s shape to it so knowing the shapes of these will be very important to help you uh, sketch these graphs quickly and then the last one here would be the square root and this one would be this shape and it stops here uh, we could also have like the cube root which we really call that which is very similar to why I just graphed actually Use this though cube root. So there's more functions we should recall, but these are kind of the, the very first parent functions we should feel fairly comfortable with. What we're going to do with these is we're going to actually graph, and this caret key this is the same thing as me saying like x squared minus 2, and this is going to be x minus 2 in parentheses squared. If we plotted those, how does that change? We have a minus 2 in both of them, but one is occurring to the x squared, one is occurring to the x before you square it. How does that change the graph? So we can make a chart or a graph, x, y, and plug in some values. So 0 would be negative 2. 0 squared is 0 minus 2. I plug in 1. 1 squared is 1 minus 2 is negative 1. I plug in 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 2 would be 2. And I can also plug in some negative values. Negative 1 would still give me a negative 1. And negative 2 will still give me 2. And so I can plot these, 0, negative 2, and then 1, negative 1, and 2, 2. And I can also use mirror images because I know the shape of this is a quadratic. So here's my quadratic. Now from the parent function, what's changed? It's been this point, the origin, which was the vertex on the parent function, is now down here. If we sketch the other one over here, the second one, so I put 0 in, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. Now this is a little different. Uh, if I plug in 1, I get negative 1 squared, which is 1. If I plug in 2, I get 0 squared or 0. If I plug in 3, I get 1 squared or 1. If I plug in 4, I get 2 squared or 4. So now I see the symmetry of my points here. I'm actually going to be at 2, 0, and then 1, 1, and 3, 1, and 0, 4, and 4, 4. 
to get this shape. So what's happened to the origin in this graph has gone from the origin it's moved right to. So they're the same exact parabola. One just been moved down to, one's been moved right to. So what is this number here and here to the graph? And th so this is all about transformations or translations of the function. So if you're given f of x, um, f of x is the function, and we just add some value c to it, it's going to be a vertical shift up. If it's minus c, it's going to be a vertical, sh vertical shift down c units. So that value out here, that is adding or subtracting to the function, and that's what this one's really doing. Here we're subtracting 2 to the function. The function is x squared, and then we're subtracting 2 outside of that. That's a vertical shift. Now, if the c value that we're adding and subtracting is applying to the x before you take the function, then it's going to be a horizontal shift. Now, notice this is a minus c, but we're going to shift it right. It's opposite the direction of the symbol, the sign. And so a plus c means we're actually shifting it left c. And so what does this negative in front of the function do? So if we looked at just the basic function f of x, equals negative x squared. We should we call that quadratics within open down. So most things we care with that. But what happens when it's f of negative x? Um, when we put a negative in for x. So it be negative x quantity squared. What happens to that? Now this one it actually doesn't change it at all because it's an even function. It's really even odd. But what it actually does this would be a horizontal reflection not a vertical. Uh, and so these are the reflections, x-axis reflection or a y-axis reflection. So the horizontal or vertical reflections by the where the negative is. Uh, expansions and contractions. So the number c in our textbook they call it c, how c is applied to the function. If it's a multiplying to the function, uh, outside of the function, it's going to, and it depends if it's greater than 1 or if it's some kind of fraction, it is a kind of shrink or stretch. So if it's greater than 1, it's going to stretch the graph, stretch vertically. If it's between 0 and 1, it's actually going to shrink the graph vertically. Now if it's applying to the x first, it's horizontal, and it's still opposite what you think. So greater than 1, you think it would uh, stretch it, but it actually is a horizontal shrink. And then if it's a decimal, it's actually a horizontal stretch. So let me see if I can explain this to you or show you visually. So let's just look at uh, if f of x equals x cubed. That's the parent function. Now let's multiply by a number out here. This is uh, typically called a's in most functions like ax squared or ax cubed is what we call that. So that function, if we have this cubic function, if I take that, if a, depending on the number of it, if a is greater than 1, we are actually making it grow faster so we stretch it vertically. If a is between 0 and 1, we shrink it and so it becomes a little flatter. So you're talking about how you make it more vertical or, or squished or make it more flat is what a does to it. Now if we changed it and made it uh, g of x and put it in the parentheses. Now it's applied to the x first. So now you're going to take that same parent function and you're going to move it horizontally. You're going to stretch it horizontally or shrink it horizontally. And so that's what the a value does. And we're not going to do a whole lot of the horizontal uh, shrink or reflection or stretch. We'll do sh shifting it, translating, but we won't be uh, stretching a whole lot horizontally. We will vertically. So I want to talk about this value here, the a value. That value I call the awesome a value. And it's because if I just give you a basic function like 2x cubed, I know if I'm plotting that, I can first plot the point of inflection. And let's actually put a change to it. Let's put plus 3 here. So now I know it's been moved up 3. So I can go 1, 2, 3. I've not moved it left or right because there's no nothing added to the x. And so then I can plot that point of inflection here. The awesome a value, I means if I go one right from that point, 
I'm going to go up or down our A value. So I'm going to go up 2. I also know because I have this shape right here, if I go left 1, I'm going to go down 2. And so that actually helps me sketch this graph quickly. So I can get three points really quick using the vertex or the HK values or um, our sh shift, horizontal vertical shift, and then our awesome A value. So let's go through another example here. And let me just make one up. Let's just do, uh, if I have G of X is equal to one half the quantity of the absolute value of x minus two plus three. So I'm sketching this. I first want to figure out what the shift is. So we are going to go right our h value or our uh, value adding or subtracting to x. So we're going to go right two and we're going to go up three. So right two up three. And then that's the point I want to start with. That's kind of my starting value. And my awesome A value says one half. So if I go right one unit, I'm going to go up only a half. If I go left one unit, I'm going to go up one half. So that helps me get the shape to get the, uh, the absolute value of the V shape. If I do it with a curve, let's just do it with another basic function. Let's just take a quadratic. I have h of x is equal to a negative 3x squared plus 1 quantity squared minus, and I actually just do plus 2. So I still want to plot that vertex, that starting value, what's my shifting right, left, up, down. So we are going to go left 1, and we're going to go up 2. That's just from the values that we're adding and subtracting to the function. So if we plot that point, left 1, up 2, that's our starting point. Now using our awesome A value, if I go right 1, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3. If I go left 1, I know the shape of this is a quadratic opening down, I'm also going to go down 3. So it helps me get these three points really quick just using the shifting and then the awesome A value. Now I can't go right 1, right another 1, then down 3 because it's not linear. If I went to another right one, as that x equals 1, I would actually have to plug in 1 for x and calculate that. So that would be 1 plus 1 or 2, 2 squared, which is 4, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, negative 12 plus 2 would be negative 10. We'd be down here at negative 10 for this next point. Uh, and so I can use these points, use these points to help me sketch the graph. As it grows so quickly, I'm only going to plot those three points and call it good. That's it. That's all we're going to talk about today. Just our parent functions on how to graph these and how we uh, have horizontal and vertical stretches. Um, we have shifting transformations. So we're going to call it good. Have a good night.